welcome to the right theater and today we are going to be talking about harry potter therefore i think the setup needs a bit of a change Ooh, there we go I, I, I think i think i completely changed the setup making it officially harry potter video ready all right let's begin ranking all the harry potter books in last place we have the order of the phoenix um Right off the bat, there is a large problem with it, and that is the size of the book itself. This is the largest um, manga volume. That, like, I, so, but this book is bigger than any manga volume I have. All right, this is how big this boy is. It's like eight hundred forty something pages. This is the longest book I've ever read, and <laughs> unlike like that Rony Kenshin last three and one, where it's. Yeah, obviously, a graphic novel. This is just all words, um, which is how most books are, uh, which is something I kind of forget because of how much manga I've been reading. But, um, yeah, so this book is, like, really long, and it is <laughs> not the very good. The parts that make this book so long are just padded out in filler, just stuffed into here. Just stuff that doesn't even need to be here. Like how all the stuff with Umbridge is perfectly summed up in the movie. In that one scene where it just shows how many laws that she put in place and how not fun all of it was and how upset all of the students at Hogwarts were. It was just that simple. The movie for Order of the Phoenix is legitimately the only Harry Potter movie that did it better than the book. That's because it, it's the only one that, like, took advantage of the shorter format and improved this long book, which did not need to be this long. It, it didn't need to be this way. <laughs> I could talk forever about why this is just so drawn out. The Umbridge stuff, just sitting around doing nothing forever. I lost interest so many times. Until the very end, and that is, I mean, <laughs> this book is so boring for the first solid chunk of it. Like, almost all of this I had little to no interest in until the end, which is the big fight. And it's also where my favorite character, Sirius, dies, beginning the trend within my life that every character I love dies. <laughs> so, there you go. This is my least favorite. It's the only Harry Potter book I dislike, and upon reread, I disliked it even more, because then I already knew what was going to happen, so there was just a sense of dread the whole time of, oh, this is going to go on for about 700 more pages until the final Ministry of Magic um, battle ends. I really love that fight. Um, Bellatrix killing Sirius, as sad as it made me, is one of my favorite moments within the entire series. It's just to get to that one, like, awesome ending we had to go through all of this. Like, I I just reread this recently, and I completely, I, I barely remember anything important that happened here until the end. Like, almost all of the memorable and really, really, really good stuff happens at the end of the book. I, I liked kind of hanging out in Sirius's house. I think that was pretty cool, but... That's just because I really like Sirius, and that's that's it. I'm not a fan of this book. All right, next up, this is one that like <laughs> I, I like it. I li okay, Philosopher Stone. I like this one. I this is a good one. It's a perfect introduction. It's just kind of like it's just that. It's just the perfect introduction, and it doesn't really try and do much past that, and that's fine, because it's the first one. It sets all the precedents that would be fulfilled within future ones, and I don't have a whole lot to say about it. It's good, but almost the entire book is talking about how the world works, and explaining it, and it does a really, 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 really good job of that, but that's all it is, and... It, there you go. That, I don't really have too much to say about it. It's good. My uh, favorite moment in it would, again, probably be the ending uh, with Quirrell and the whole, like, figuring out what the dungeon stuff was. But yeah, there you go. Alright, next up we have 
Chamber of Secrets. Now, this one is, it's, I, there are a lot of similarities between these two. They are very similar in length, similar in, like, how the story is formatted. They, they are j extremely similar books. And that's fine. I mean, it both kind of starts with them showing up to Hogwarts. A mystery is kind of slowly uncovered until the gang meets up in the very big finale in a dungeon kind of scenario. There are a lot of differences, but the reason why I prefer this one over um, this one, and these two are similar despite the differences, um, the reason why I prefer this one is because it introduces Dobby and Lockhart, and those are two of my favorite characters in the entire show, especially Lockhart. Um, so yeah, there you go. Also, in the fifth book, Lockhart, there's a moment with him, and I like that. I just forgot to bring that up. That's like one of the few things I like about that book. Um, but Lockhart's in it. Uh, I love Lockhart. He's one of my favorite characters. So this this was a good good read. I it's probably the funniest Harry Potter book I would say, and it's it's overall very solid. I prefer it over the other one, which I think it's the most similar to. Um, my favorite part would probably be the part where Lockhart releases all of the like little fairies, uh, and then he has to scramble around and catch them because he realizes he doesn't know what he's talking about. I, I just love Lockhart, man. He, he's so good. All right, next up, we have The Half-Blood Prince. Uh, this is a fun fact. I think I heard this somewhere. Um, these two books were supposed to be the same, but the publisher was like, no, that's that's way too long. Uh, so she had to split them up into two. And I feel like that kind of shows, because I feel like these two come together very easily. Like, I, as soon as I finished this page, I instantly just picked up this one, and, you know, there you go. So it definitely feels like a prelude to the Deathly Hollows, but I absolutely love, like, the diving into Voldemort's past with the little, what is it called? The little magic pool water thingy. Uh, that, that was really good. That was, that was really good. I love those parts. I like, like, going into people's past and, like, kind of learning about pre-established characters in that way. And this is probably one of the best examples of that. Um, all the stuff with Draco, like, Draco is a character I never really liked or cared about too much, but, I mean, this book is the only one where I was like, I wonder what Draco's doing, you know, that, that was kind of interesting for me. Obviously, Dumbledore, um, is, this is the book where he is the most important, or I guess not the most important, the book where he is the most prevalent, uh, and that is great, because uh, I really like Dumbledore, and it gave him a certain um, humanity. Uh, I guess not humanity. It humanized him, because instead of him looking like this kind of deity kind of character, he was just a wizard, which worked, I think. You know, he, just, he, was, he was a dude who was just trying his best, and I really liked that aspect of his character. The bit where Snape kills him, I was shocked. That was insane. And obviously learning what we do in the next book, uh, Snape is just like... I, I still don't know how I feel about Snape. I've been finished with this series for years and years and years now, and I just still don't know how I think about that guy. He's, he's a very interesting character, though. I also thought for sure for the whole thing that Voldemort was going to be the Half-Blood Prince, but... It was Snape, which I was kind of upset about that my prediction was wrong. Uh, but nope, there you go. I absolutely love this. I, I, I love this book. It, it, the, it, the only reason why, um, because there's no really parts about that I dislike, the only reason why it's below the other three is because I simply prefer those. Also, like a lot of people have a problem with this book with the romance stuff. I really didn't. I felt like it kind of felt natural. And it didn't really feel forced, like I think a lot of people kind of see it as. Alright, next up, Deathly Hollows. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the whole final MacGuffin quest feel of the final book, but it's still so phenomenal. The kind of final, darkest shift in tone for the entire book was just really, really well done in my opinion. I think it's super interesting to see how it went from 
like, lighthearted kid goes to wizard school to, oh yeah, everybody's dead now. Uh, and that, that was just really good, really interesting, really, really nicely done. I love all the symbolism with Hagrid taking him away on the motorcycle bike just as he had, you know, put him in there. And uh, I just love it. I really, I really love this. I really love this book. Um, the only major part of it I feel like I don't like was all the fighting between Ron, Hermione, and Harry, which just, I don't know, it felt kind of forced conflict. But other than that, I really liked the bit where Ron and Harry got back together and destroyed the that one, um... Is, that the De is it a hollow? Is that is that one of the Deathly... Yeah, it was one of the hollows, right? No, the Deathly hollow... <laughs> I just totally had a brain fart there. Um, where they destroyed one of the Horcruxes, not with the Deathly hollows. Um... And there you go. I really like this one. Uh, Lupin dies, which was sad because he was my favorite character after Sirius died. So there you go. Very, very sad. A lot of cool people died. Mad Eye died. Man, I really like Mad Eye. Very sad. All right, number two, we have Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, Azkaban is my favorite, my second favorite for a very simple reason, and that is because Sirius and Lupin. Are introduced. Lupin is easily um, the best defense against the dark arts teacher, and I fight you on that if you disagree. Unless it's Mad Eye, because then I'll be like, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> he is. He's very good. I really love his character. I love the aspect of Patronuses and like learning about that. And Harry having to overcome some of his trauma as a child um, with the um, what are these boys called? They're um, it's called Death Eaters. No, those are the those are Voldemort's minions. What are these? These are... It starts with an H. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember. Oh, it's been too long. I need to reread. Because I reread the first... Um, like, the first one and the second one and the fifth one. I skipped this one and my favorite one. Um, but yeah. So, this is... I really like the beginning bit with uh, Stan Chun Pike. And all the, like, imagery of how it kind of built up towards Sirius's reveal. And how we kind of thought that he was a traitor. And really, it was Wormtail. And the Marauders. I really like the concept of the Marauders. And I like all of their characters minus Wormtail. Uh, so there you go. I absolutely, absolutely love this book. It was one of the ones I just breezed through in the span of a day. It was really good. I really love this book. Alright, so if you're a fan of Harry Potter and you are, you know, know what all the books are, then you know that my favorite is the Triwizard Goblet of Fire. Um, the Goblet of Fire is, I love tournament arcs, tuning exams, Naruto, World Martial Arts Tournament, Dragon Ball. Tournament arcs are the absolute best, and I really hope One Piece does a proper tournament that isn't a baby back fight at some point. Um... But this, this, this book right here, I, the reason why it took me multiple days to finish is because I didn't want it to end. It has such phenomenal pacing. All the others, I feel like, kind of either go by too quick or too slow, um, which is my biggest problem with its successor, is that this has the worst pacing ever, but this one has the best. There was never a point where I was bored. It felt constantly moving constantly interesting. It felt like the stakes were higher while also having a more, you know, light-hearted tone than kind of the... This was the perfect balance for me. Like, where it wasn't the, you know, kind of more light-hearted. I guess, like, Prisoner um, wasn't very light-hearted, but it was kind of the middle book, um, where these three are, like, on the more light-hearted side, and then these three are doom, gloom, and despair central, right? This was the perfect mix for me because it held a lot of those original aspects of the show, and not the show, the um, series that I really enjoyed from the lighthearted side while also moving it in perfectly, I feel like, into that darker tone. And Voldemort was resurrected at the end. Um, my favorite out of all the challenges out of the maze, the maze was, I, I probably should make a video ranking all the Harry Potter movies at some point, but the maze was done so bad, so bad in the movie, um, but, uh, this one, like, the, 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 the dragon one, that is so fun to read, because, like, I, sometimes I struggle with, like, kind of envisioning what it looks like in my mind, which is 
why I prefer reading manga because it's just right there in front of me. But with that, I the whole time I was just reading it and it was just so fluidly moving. It was oh, I love it. The maze is also great. The underwater segment, despite some of its plot holes, um, is also awesome. I think I still prefer the maze because of how momentous it felt, especially at the end. This it's just my favorite. I think it will probably always be. Um, I probably should also reread this thing soon because, yeah, I just absolutely love this book. Um, and I will, I will die on the hill that this is the best one. Uh, I, I could go on forever. I, 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 <laughs> God, okay, I, I want to mention Barty Crouch Jr. slash Mad Eye because it was so funny to me. And this is probably one of the only, like, things that, like, I, I don't really like about the book. But also, I don't really care all that much about the fact that, like, Barty Crouch was teaching Harry Potter, his arch, ne his, like, master's arch nemesis, like, things that he would use in the future to defend beat him, which I just found funny. I so I know some people have a problem with that. I really don't. I just, I really love Mad-Eye, and I'm glad that Barty Crouch just played into that Mad-Eye role perfectly, because then when Mad-Eye came back in future books, I was like, oh yeah, Mad-Eye. I already know Mad-Eye. I like Mad-Eye. But like, when I say that Mad-Eye Moody is my second favorite Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, I'm really saying that Barty Crouch is, but I'm also really saying that Mad-Eye is. That's confusing, but there you go. Uh, I, I really, really, really love this one. This is, I don't know, yeah. I, I hold this one, like, in the standard, probably much higher than all the others. Like, like he, this is, like, down here is, like, Order of the Phoenix, and then there's all the others, and then there's, like, Prisoner, and then there's this one, you know, it's, I, I, I love, I love that. I love Harry Potter as a series, but that, that was the one that kind of cemented my forever affection for the Harry Potter series. There you go. Those are my opinions on the Harry Potter books. Um, if you want to see more non-anime, um, stuff from me, then leave a like and tell me what you want to see in the comments. My next video is probably, it's just going to go back to normal anime stuff, so... Um, also, this was actually the second video I ever planned to record, um, for this channel, so I could kind of diversify my portfolio from the beginning. I was going to make the manga collection, and then Harry Potter, and then I was going to make the Naruto rank video, but I, I think the files got lost or something. But yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. Join the Discord if you want to talk to me, um, maybe about my list or anything like that. Yep, yeah, see ya.